everybody and welcome back to the channel it's the new Runcam 5 a lot of people have been waiting for this camera because the old Runcam 3 was it was a pretty good value camera it, it, it did the job Runcam 3s to me was a disappointment the optics were crap and it's quite a bit heavier and, and it's bigger and it just nah it just didn't work for me the other option we've had of course is the Foxia box and the, the box one is it's a good camera 4k camera it does a good job but the new one apparently has got a few issues if you go and watch a review by RC Shim by Mario at RC Shim I'll put a link in the description of this video you'll see that oh, they kind of botched it up with version 2 of the of the box which is probably why they didn't send me one for review um, but to be fair Runcam I think botched it up with version 2 of the 3 so both of those version 2 products weren't as good as the originals but now we've got version 3 which is the Runcam 5 has that confused you certainly confused me but let's take a look at what you get oh it's looking at us steering us in the face there it is look at it's lovely isn't it um, one thing that I noticed initially is it's really small well it seems small and it's black damn you run cam why is it black um, I love these bold colors because when this bounces off your model and you're looking for it in the long grass this really stands out this hmm I can see they're going to sell more of these because people lose them than for any other reason so yeah there we go that's the camera let's do a little bit of side by side here is the original run cam 3 and they're basically pretty much the same no, it's actually a, might even be a little bit smaller where is a straight edge I don't have one I'll use my smartphone yes yeah, ever so marginally smaller you can't see it from this angle but yeah and it's not as deep by the look of it yeah it's just a few millimeters either way it's a bit smaller but it will still fit in fact I think it's going to fit really nicely in your average GoPro session mount yeah I confirmed this yesterday because I actually had one couple of flights with this already and it does fit into GoPro session mount so this is going to be the camera you buy because you can't buy a GoPro session anymore and you're cheap you really don't want to spend a lot of money because it's a $99 camera it's a really good price point 99 bucks is a good price point if you lose it if you smash it up well you're not going to cry too hard and the wife won't beat you around the ears for wasting her money no it's probably a good price point uh, when you consider that the Foxia box is quite a bit more expensive and the original sessions were also kind of expensive so um, this is going to be a quick preview of the camera because I say I've only had it for a couple of hours and I, uh, I haven't really had a close look at it yet I've noticed some things but there you go lovely black foam insert in the box oh you get a manual Ta -da! that's online too so if you want to see the manual just go online download it from the Runcam website it gives you all the info that you get in the printed manual and you get a box of stuff I'm not going to unbox this but I'll just take everything out of the box so you can see what's in it um what have we got here run cam battery straps or camera straps I like you know um trouble is a little negative point. there's no mounts there's no mounts at all now given that this is for the FPV market it's probably not such a big deal but um it'd be nice to have some kind of mount even a TPU mount or something that we could use for the people who don't have mounts already and what else is in here we have a micro USB to standard USB connector oh I've been I've been looking for one of these now I've got millions of them lying around the place anyway that's it there's nothing else in the box that's what you get for your money and the box there you go all the, I've dropped it on the floor there you go so that's kind of cool um, now I'll give you a quick sort of little bit of a tour around it while I remember the bits and pieces okay so that's the top of the camera there's the button there's only one button it's really not really hard to well, actually there are two buttons but there's only one usually accessible button that's this one turns it on starts recording sets it into the mode change and all sorts of stuff and there's a little LED here which goes different colors um, according to what the camera is doing in the front we have a lens and things now if we look at the Runcam 3S you notice that this has got a much bigger black bit than that but I think inside there the little tiny hole which is where the lens really lives is about the same so I, I, I don't know if this is going to have the same problem with lens flares that the Runcam 3S had um, but so far the linearity of the image seems an awful lot better than this because this camera here had a lot of distortion near the edges of the screen this one seems much much better so I'm hoping they've really improved the optics now as you can see from this shot it is quite a bit smaller than the original than the Runcam 3S which is great it's also lighter I'll weigh it in a minute on the negative side you're not going to be able to put an ND filter on this very easily there's no this had screws and nuts and things here. you could actually undo this and you could in theory put an ND filter on there what's an ND filter why would you use an ND filter well that's a subject for another video which I'll do shortly if you want to see it so tell me in the, in the, in the comments if you want to see me tell you about ND filters why you would use them what they do and, and you know the benefits thereof then ask and I shall uh, provide that information now 
as I say, the, the optics in here look a lot more like the original run cam, which had much better image linearity and it had far fewer lens flares. So I'm hoping that they've gone back to the original stuff. And of course, with the box, Foxier box, they also had this removable front, which means you could put a ND filter on there if you wanted to. And see, they've got a big glassy bit too. So yeah, I'm hoping this will be a whole lot better. So that's there on the back. There's just five, I think. Are they holes? Hang on. Yep, they're holes. I just blew through there. It's probably got all spit on it now. Uh, they're holes. So this is not waterproof. No, this is not a waterproof camera. But hey, it's not a GoPro session. It's not a $200 camera. It's a $100 camera. It's not designed for flying your drones underwater. So live with it, I think, is the way to look at it. Um, what else we got here now? This is kind of a rubberized textured thing. So it's going to grip fairly well in most of your camera mounts, I think, which is quite good. But again, it's not orange. I wanted orange. Damn your run cam. Right, it's got five on the side, so you won't accidentally mistake it for, if I can find it, the run cam three. You know, if you can read, then you'll realize, hey, this is the run cam five. That's the three. Um, and here is a little slidey door. There we go. And hidden in there is your micro SD card. Now, this is good because it'll take up to 128 gigabytes of micro SD, which is kind of important when you're shooting at 4K because it, it does fill up the card a bit quicker. And if you want to shoot at 4K, they say you will need a U3 type card, which is a faster card. But it's been my experience with things like the Foxier box. You can get away with slower cards sometimes. So it's as much about the quality of the card as the technical specifications. But there's your micro SD card. You see it in there. And in there, there's a little button, which is the reset button, which you use sometimes um, for things like formatting the SD card, if you want to format it in the camera. And also for... Uh, what else was there? Oh, if the camera locks up, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, you might need that, you might not. I've formatted that card in there. Always pays to format your card in the camera because then you know it's formatted to the right file system because you can have FAT, extended FAT, and NTFS, all sorts of different file systems. The camera will best recognize the file system that it creates when you format the card in the camera. So always do that. Always recommend it. Also, hopefully it would spit it out if it was a, a dud card. So other side, micro USB, pretty common now. And this is how also you know it's not waterproof. Look, the water would gush in there and put the fire out inside. So um, yeah, micro USB, it's got a 950 milliamp hour battery or something, nearly a 1000 milliamp battery. It takes a little while to charge. The first charge, I used a one amp USB charger. It took two hours, woo. Um, so I don't know why it took so long that I charged it again last night. It was really quick with a two amp charger, so or two amp USB supply. So I guess it pays to use a two amp USB supply if you want to get that charge quickly. Battery is not removable, which is one of the things I lo everyone loved about the Runcan 3S is you could take the battery out. So you could have a little box full of batteries, all pre-charged, or if your battery failed, you could just replace it. This one, no. But that's not a big deal. If, if you were going to make a removable battery in here, then it would be heavier, it would be bulkier, it would be more expensive. So it wouldn't have been $99 camera anymore. And the other thing is that most of these other cameras I've been talking about, the Box and the Runcam 3S, they have Wi-Fi. Woohoo! This doesn't have Wi-Fi. doesn't have Bluetooth. doesn't have anything in terms of external communication. So you might think, well, how on earth are you going to change the various resolutions and frame rates if you can't actually connect it to your smartphone? Well, this is, in a move of sheer brilliance, I'll show you how you do that. Right, I'm going to show you how to change the modes or how Runcam have set this up so you can change the modes in your Runcam 5 using your smartphone, even though it doesn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Right, first of all, we'll turn the camera on. Runcam on. Runcam on. Ah, seriously, did you think that a $100 camera was going to have the same kind of features as a run cam as a GoPro session? Of course not. It doesn't have voice activated commands. It's, it's manual, strictly manual. You've got to push the button to turn it on and push the button to record. No, it's a $99 camera. I've got to keep telling you that. Right, here is the run cam app. Let's go into it on my fancy smartphone. Look at this fancy smartphone. Now, here are all your, your settings here, and you've got quite a range of adjustable variable. Come on, is this going to work? No. Um, we'll go to general. I think there's more on general. There we go. So you can see there, there's, there's, there's a lot of settings on here um, for changing the way the camera works, which is great. So you can configure a lot of stuff, saturation, exposure, compensation, contrast, sharpness, and metering mode, all the stuff that you would expect from even a more expensive camera. And so what you do is you basically go through and set the things you want. For example, it will put by default a Runcam logo on your HD or 4K footage. Who wants that? Seriously, I don't want Runcam plastered all over my footage, so I'm going to turn that off because I don't want, 
Oh, come on. This phone is crap. Get over there. Go. There we go. I don't want the run cam um, logo on my footage. Also, I noticed yesterday when I was doing some test footage and contrast was too high set to three. So I'm going to oops, set that to two, which hopefully will give me a better dynamic range. Sharpness is at three. I don't want that. That adds all sorts of horrible extra stuff that you don't really want. Ringing and so forth. Exposure pre-compensation, exposure compensation. I don't know what that is. Oh, plus is darker and yeah, I don't know. I'll leave it at standard. Saturation three. Yeah, metering mode average. White balance auto. Low light enhancement. I'll leave that on. Auto shut down. Power supply. Yeah, all those things seem pretty good. Let's go back to video. I want to have video quality high. I don't want loop recording. Auto record. No, thank you. Resolution. Now, let's have a look at the resolutions. This is quite interesting. Hopefully we can see this. I may have to go to manual exposure. One moment, please. Right. Hopefully you're watching this in HD and you can see what I'm doing here. But it's got a choice of various resolutions. It has 4K 30fps XV. I have no idea what XV means. And in changing it to that, I got a slightly higher sample rate on the audio. But that's all. The picture was identical. Uh, we've got 4K at 30fps. Yeah, that's good. 2.7K at 50fps. Now this is going to be a bit of an issue because some countries use 30 and 60, like America and Canada and so forth, and other countries use 25 and 50, like New Zealand and Australia and the UK. So, But they've mixed them up here. So most of the frame rates are a multiple of 30, hertz, 30 frames per second, but in the case of 2.7K, the resolution that a great many people like to use for mini quad stuff and so forth, it's 50 hertz or 50 frames per second, which can be a problem if you're editing on a Oh, the camera turned off. It could be a problem if you're editing on a, a 60 frames per second timeline because it makes the video go jerky. Anyway, we've also got 1440 at 60 frames per second. And that, again, is one that people are going to want to use. There's no super view. You can't. It hasn't got super view, but it does have 1440p, uh, which is a 4-3 aspect ratio. So you can play with it in your edit software and make it into super view if your edit software is good enough. We also have 1080p at 120 frames a second for that nice, super smooth, fluid motion. And 1080p at 60. And 1080p at 60 with XV again. No mention in the manual about XV. I've contacted Runcam and said, can you tell me what that is? Haven't got a reply yet. So it's a mystery to me. I have no idea why it's there. Anyway, so what we'll do today, I think we'll go basically for... Um, I'm going to go for 1440 at 60 FPS. There we go, because I'm going to super view it. So, no, I'll go, I should tell a lie. I'll go, I think I'll go to 1080. Come on, come back. I'll do 1080p at 60 frames a second, which is probably what most people are going to want to see. There we go. This is just HD, um, because I'm not going to do a 4K video. It takes too long to render up on YouTube. It takes only seconds on my computer, but YouTube spends days spew, spitting and mangling it until it decides to make it go. But my Patreon supporters will get extra videos showing each individual setting in a day or so when I've had a chance to do it. So you, they'll get to see all of the fine detail. And I'll do a follow-up review shortly, in which I will go into more depth and more detail on these things, because this is just a quick look. Honestly, it's only a quick look. Right, so let's say we've set everything up. We've got all the settings all ready to go. What? How do we get this onto that? And this is the big question. This is what I think they've done very well. There's a button here called Apply, and if I press that, look. We get a QR code oh, and some horrible instructions that I don't want to know about. Get rid of that. Come on. A QR code. Isn't that brilliant? So what we do is we, let's turn on our run cam again. Run cam on. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. And then we press the shutter button twice and it goes blue. Oh, I pressed it once and it's recording. Hang on. <laughs> twice. Come on. Go blue. Yes, it's gone blue. See? So now what I do, we'll all be very quiet. Hopefully the, the mic will pick this up. I'm going to There we go. Hear that beep and it flashed and it's gone back to green. What happened there was the camera read the QR code and changed all its settings to suit the parameters we set up on that. Now that's brilliant. That's, that's, that's using your kidneys, isn't it? But there is a problem. Let me tell you what the problem is. It doesn't work in the sun. I tried yesterday. There wasn't any sun yesterday, but outside it was almost impossible to use my smartphone to set the camera because there's too much reflection and too many other um, sources of light. And it, it just was... I had to actually pull my coat over my head and do it under the cover of my thing. So it's a great idea, but it's flawed. And in fact, what I would recommend people do is produce QR codes for the standard settings you might want to use. You might want to have one setting with 1080p, you might have another one 4K, another one 1440. 
print out the QR codes, write, it, write, the, write what the settings are on a piece of paper and just keep them in your backpack. So when you want to change modes, all you do is turn your camera on, go to the blue light, hold that card in front of the camera and it'll beep twice to say, hey, I'm doing that now. That would be the easiest way to do it. Don't bother with your smartphone. It just doesn't work outdoors, not reliably anyway. But the whole idea of QR codes is brilliant. And if you print them out, they will work just fine. There you go. Fantastic solution to what would have otherwise been a complicated problem. If they'd put Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in here, it wouldn't be a $99 phone. It would cost more. Now, I mentioned that this camera was quite light compared to the others. And I'm going to show you. I've got the scales that don't show the blood, and we're going to put some cameras on there. Let's start with what is probably going to be the heaviest one. It's the Fo a Foxia Box. I don't know. Actually, Foxia Box version 1. 74 gr 75 grams for the Foxia Box version 1. Let's go to the Runcam 3S, which is also a real porker. 69 grams. Okay, let's go back to the original Runcam 3. 67 grams. And let's try the new Runcam 5. Yeah, that's, that's a significant weight saving. 56 grams. That, that's a lot lighter than the others, trust me. And I've got a Mobius here. What did the Mobius weigh? Weren't they about 40 grams or something? I'm not sure. Let's, let's see. Mobius. Oh, what a guess. Honestly, I didn't. 41. Damn, I was wrong. No, 40. Yeah. 41. Ah, oh, 40 and a half grams. I was only half a gram out with my guess. But it shows you there's not a lot of difference in weight really between the Mobius and this. And this is a 4K camera. That is just a 1080p, 30 frames a second. Um, and you see this vinyl, I'm going to have to wrap my GoPro 5, my sorry, what am I saying GoPro? My Runcam 5, I'm going to wrap it in the same vinyl so I can find it in the long grass because the Mobius was the same problem. You'd lose it. I spent hours looking for one of these ones. It was this one actually, um, when it came off a quadcopter in autumn and disappeared under some leaves. Never thought I'd find it, but eventually I did. So that, that's the weight. It's, you know, it's a great weight. Okay, now one of the other features this has is distortion correction. Now, whenever you have a wide angle, this is 145 degrees by the way, so it is not that wide an angle. A lot of action cameras have up to like 165, even 175 degrees, but this is a little narrower field of view than some of those, which helps get rid of that horrible distortion you often get near the edges of the of the picture. And it has a distortion removal thing. As I say, I'll do a follow-up video. I'll demonstrate all these different modes and options to you, but the distortion removal is nice because it gets rid of that pin cushion, that kind of sort of barrel type distortion that you get with wide angle lenses. It makes all the verticals look truly vertical at the edges, which a lot of these cheaper cameras simply do not uh, deliver a, camera, a, a photo that will do that. The, the video will always have kind of distorted edges. This has some built-in software to avoid that. I haven't tried it, but it should work. Now, as I said, there's no super view in here, no super view, but the 1440p mode means you can super view some stuff up. I'm going to put some footage on the end of this, which I have super viewed using DaVinci Resolve and Fusion, which are Blackmagic development, the, the products I use for editing anyway. So it has it produced a synthetic super view. And you, you can, I think Andy RC did a very good video. He showed you where to get some software you can download and convert 1440p footage into super view footage if you want to. So I know that all the top mini quad flyers, freestyles, and that, they, they love super view because it makes them look so much better than they really are. It would even make me look better than I am. But uh, yeah, so it is, it is a must have for a serious uh, a mini quad camera. And but if you're looking at 99 bucks, you can just do it and edit, and you know that makes it worthwhile. You're not going to lose so much money. Um, there you go. I think that's about all I have got. Oh, it doesn't have automatic orientation either. You know, um, with the session, if you mount it upside down, you could configure it so it automatically flip the picture. Well, this doesn't. This this is nine. Did I mention it? 99 dollars, not 200 dollars, right? So it doesn't do that. It doesn't flip the stuff upside down. You can flip it in the software with the smartphone or whatever, but uh, it doesn't have the accelerometers to detect that for you. And it doesn't have image stabilization. I think the box. I'm not sure. I think maybe the box did have image stabilization. I would have to check that. But this doesn't have image stabilization. And so, but that's not important. I mean, you're not going to get the nice super smooth fluid motion that you get from the the GoPro 7 Hero Black Edition or whatever with its super smooth technology or with the new Osmo, not the DJI Osmo Pocket Mini whatever thingy. You're not going to get that. There's no image stabilization. So it will be, the footage won't be as smooth. If you want to have those sweeping smooth super silky stuff, don't buy this. Go and spend heaps more on a GoPro and hope you don't hit a brick wall with it. Simple as that. So there you go. This is my first, this is my little quick look at the whole thing. At the moment there's no deal breakers for me. Certainly it seems to well outperform the previous Runcam 3s, 3 and 3S. So um, yeah, I, I, 
I can't say go and buy it, but I certainly can't see a reason not to at this stage. But when the sun comes out, and it's the problem, it's, damn, it's been drizzly and dark and horrible. And I must say that in some of my footage I filmed yesterday, the wide dynamic range was really, really struggling. Um, we had this, this situation where you get a, a big sheet of white cloud, no sunshine poking through. It was late in the day and it really did darken up when you got a lot of sky in shot. And in that respect, it didn't perform particularly well, but not many cameras do in that kind of situation. A wide dynamic range is really, if you have too much wide dynamic range, it, it makes your pictures kind of washed out. So you, there's a balance to be done there. So, but the contrast was set a bit high then. I've turned the contrast down. I'll go and have another fly now where the conditions are similar but not the same. And we'll see if that has reduced that particular problem. And then I'll do some footage which I'll try and get to look as good as it can using my edit tools. So I'll show you the raw footage and I'll show you the edited footage to just see what the potential of this camera is rather than what it delivers straight out of the box. There you go. God, this was supposed to be quick. And how long is this video? I've no idea. Way too long. But thank you for watching. And as I say, stay tuned. There will be more video on the Runcam 5. 99 bucks is a bit of a steal, I think. If I don't find any deal breakers, then yeah, rip into it and load up on those. And it doesn't matter if you smash them or lose them. 99 bucks. Gee, that's pretty good value. Right. Thanks for watching. Questions, comments to the usual place. If you've got any specific things you'd like to see me test with this camera, then do so. People have commented already on my Patreon uh, page about heat. Is it going to get hot? Well, I tested it yesterday. It didn't even get warm, but it was a cold day. It was about 10 degrees Celsius, which I think in Fahrenheit is about, um, I don't know, minus 400. I've got no idea. Imperial. What's that? I've t no, Americans, you're a law unto yourselves. Anyway, um, yeah, it doesn't seem to get hot and it seems to have a power consumption of about three watts, which when you consider the size of this camera, three watts of power consumption is not going to raise the temperature much at all. So I would expect it to get perhaps warm, but not overly hot. Um, and remember, it's got those holes in the back to let the water in. So if it gets really hot, just drop it in a bucket. There you go. Um, no, that would kill it. Don't worry, don't, don't drop it in a bucket. There you go, thanks for your time. And now I'm going to get outside, put it on a quad, and you can see how it looks. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Subscribe so you don't miss the follow-up. Okay, here we go. I've got the microphone turned right down, so there's probably no audio, because this is tuned basically for models, but it'll let you get an indication of how much we get out of the microphone when we're flying. This is the Copus Hollybro Copus 2 and let's see what it looks like. I've changed to 2.7K, 50 frames per second. Let's see what difference that makes. Now we're in 1440p and I'll do it both with SuperView post edit and without SuperView um, editing. So let's have a look.